for any of this? <laughs> yeah, you sure gonna do that? Because hopefully you will, you gotta be careful on this rock. It's a little stable. Well, we are here in Oklahoma City at this is uh, the property of uh, Dick Size. He's a oil man, entrepreneur, has an equestrian owner. Um, he and his wife have Julian Wines, named after her family, and uh, the big supporters of Indian country, art in general, and he has commissioned and allowed me to build my first a big teepee, and, and it's eight foot glass teepee, and it's uh, Gus Tietzort, uh, Tietzort designed did all the fabrication, and it was and Bernie Colbert uh, was there invaluable in helping to do all the engineering and, and design and it's done. <laughs> so come take a look at it. <laughs> so this is uh, the piece. Uh, the idea orig was originally conceived for uh, the American Indian Cultural Center uh, and for one of their public arts projects and was shelved and it was Justice Yvonne Cogger who made the introduction between Mr. Sias and myself and uh, just over a course of a few minutes he had heard about the, the teepee idea and wanted to have one scaled down. So this is actually eight foot. Now, as you can tell the pudding, this is not how it's going to be in its final state. We're gonna have landscaping that's gonna come in with soil. They're gonna bring it up to about right here to cover all the red puddings and so that this will appear to just rest on the grass. And so that I, this is to scale what little children's teepees are. You'll see this quite a bit and uh, your Plains Indian tribes, where it's essentially just a girl's little, to you know, dollhouse sort of thing. And so, the idea was to create something that really evoked some, you know, communion or community. And of course, this being scaled down from the original idea. Whenever kids see this, I'm hoping that they're going to want to play with this. I hope that they want to get inside this and check it out and play and smudge it and play. And this is not going to be hurt by anyone, really. So if you have right here, what we have right here are actually two panes of half-inch glass. And so it is overkill, but it lends to a dramatic effect. Uh, they've been they've been heated together, so their lamination is. Incre incredibly strong. Uh, this is going to lend itself to all sorts of uh, playtime for grandkids of Mr. Sias and other kids who are here. And one of the things that I find fascinating is that built into this, you have, if you were able to look down, you would see uh, a clear outline of like the um, what we call the whirlwind, otherwise known as a swastika because for us, that's strength. Right here, the, uh, with this bracket and this brace that's used to keep all the four panels in place up at the top from touching, if you'll, know, if you'll notice later on with some other shots, it's actually from like the Muscogean cultures or the Southeastern cultures of the United States, it's the four arms interlinked, which is one of the oldest Choctaw designs so you have the swastika, this, and then the teepee. Now, although I am Choctaw, and we did not use teepees as a primary dwelling through uh, some of the paintings by like George Catlin and others, they do depict that we did use it when we were traveling. So it would have been just a tent, a mobile home. And so the fact that this is a modality that we use by most of the tribes in Oklahoma kind of connects it together. And so this, itself is something that hopefully, and this is my hope, that uh, we will be able to build on and more expressions. And by what that I mean is both in 
various sizes, but then forms and functions that can be used with the glass and incorporated, whether it's etching, whether on the footing or on the glass, be able to choose no footing like this. Like it's, if it's an interior, be able to play with it to where it's just glass going into whatever foundation work. There's a lot of things we can do with this. And surprisingly, and I'm kind of shocked that there aren't many examples like this in Indian art of using glass and these simple panes. And so I'm very fortunate that I got to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as I don't know if you noticed, but Mr. Sias has always had a penchant for for outdoor art, and this is his sculpture garden. But he gave me the option when he was going to redo this whole space. He gave me the option where I wanted it, and right behind, if you could see where I'm looking behind the camera, behind Ralph, that's his office. I wanted it to be right at the heart. Rather than up there on the promontory, I wanted to be right down here, kind of, it, because this is, if you'll notice, the whole sort of creek design of it here, I wanted it to be exactly where it would have been in real life, next to the water, right in the safe area. And so, it's kind of cool to ha actually see it in its context, its new home, and I. The only thing cooler is actually going to be when we dedicate this in October, and you know the grass will be all, will have all taken you know to it, and we'll have families, we'll have people here to really interact with this, and yeah, so you need to take a look at all this and give it, yeah. So if you get to Oklahoma City, you need to come by and see this. Wherever you are, whoever's watching, you need to come see this because I am a little biased. I think it's pretty cool. So, see you like. My little dwelling. <laughs>